Guys, welcome you all for the last session of the Value Added course. Uh, this is the last session. This session is going to be handled by the uh, Nityanandam, who is the CEO of uh, Nifo System, who is having uh, 15 years plus of experience in the uh, in the industry. So I I pass on my mic to uh, Nityanandam sir for handling this session. Sir, you can ch take care, sir. Yeah, sure, Hari. Can you all hear me? Uh, well, you are able to hear me, right? Yeah, yes, sir. We can able to hear you. Okay. Can I get started, Hari? Yes, sir. All right. So, yeah. Hi, everyone. Good evening. And this is Nityanandam Ramesh. Um, yeah, so, to introduce myself, I have been working across uh, different TCS, uh, CTS, HCL, and Wipro. So now I'm here. I'm here on the request uh, based by Hari to share a few words and insights about uh, artificial intelligence, cloud, and, uh, you know, of course, uh, computer vision, right? So <clears throat> I have a PowerPoint, which I can share with you all. However, before doing that, I would like to, um, you know, share a few words about uh, basically, basically about cloud and artificial intelligence, right? So, what is cloud and what is, uh, you know, artificial intelligence? Uh, cloud, we all know, or you might be aware that uh, cloud is the new buzz in the IT industry. Uh, people have been talking about cloud for past five, six years because uh, before that. Not much people know about cloud, or not, not, not much people were uh, used to this term, cloud, right? So, cloud is a relatively new domain or uh, technology in the world of IT. Uh, so, so, what is cloud? Cloud is the place where uh, you know the IT infrastructure is set up as a shared area, which could be leveraged or Know, which could be used by multiple companies okay so what amazon amazon was a pioneer uh, who started this cloud technology in fact it was a private cloud because amazon started uh, hosting data center of its own which it thought could be leveraged by uh, other users and other companies in the future so the main advantage of using cloud is, you know, the commercials, the, the cost is much cheaper than, you know, buying your own uh, data center or setting up your own data center in the, in the own premises of any company, right? And what is the next advantage of having a cloud infrastructure is, you know, uh, scalability. You can use or you can you can buy any number of uh, servers and space that you want, and you can quickly decommission this space and server if you don't need that. This kind of uh, luxury will not be available when you host any data center or a private space of your own. So that is not possible in, um, in, in the thing that you privately own, right? So this is another advantage or pros of having a cloud space. So this is very, 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 very basic about cloud or I'm just giving you a very high level insight of what cloud is. However, when you do a deep dive into it, you will come across so many terminologies, advantages of how a cloud can be, a cloud space can be leveraged. So we all know Amazon is a pioneer. Next comes, you know, uh, Azure. And then we have Google. Now uh, we have Alibaba also set up its own cloud. So there are many players now in the market who is actually offering cloud. There are n number of players, I should say, because you know there are so many people who are converting their own private data center also as a cloud offering. So that is some that that, that is called as a public cloud. And of, of course, we also have something called as uh, you know private cloud where. Uh, people set up their own data center and not share it with anyone else. This is, of course, private cloud. This is almost synonymous with uh, private data center of your own, 
okay um so this is about cloud because i don't want to uh, divert my topic uh, towards cloud and uh, um, share more information about cloud and confuse it with right so let's stop with this and you know what is we'll be moving into artificial intelligence so what is artificial intelligence we all know what is artificial intelligence and machine learning because there are a couple of terminologies by which we name it right uh, you know artificial intelligence is definitely is what is defined as machine learning so what is machine learning machine can't learn by itself okay so we as humans train the machines or the computers to learn based on the algorithm that we deploy on the machines okay so it is we the humans who actually key in data that uh, who, who actually feed in the data for the machines to know what the data is then it has to analyze the data form or derive a pattern out of it right and by forming a pattern or deriving the pattern out of it it will actually come up with a conclusion and provide this conclusion to the human saying that it is what has been analyzed and inferred from the given set of data so this is what is called machine learning okay so uh, yeah artificial intelligence is nothing but machine learning but artificial intelligence i would say is comprising of you know machine learning and deep learning deep learning is the next level of uh machine learning algorithm which is a slightly more complicated terminology and uh, the next level of machine learning is you know deep learning which uses of course the neural networks okay so so we have covered what is machine learning at a very high level <clears throat> so uh coming to computer vision so before even we uh yeah i think yeah we have covered what is artificial intelligence right so before we covered um, computer vision we have seen what is artificial intelligence but what is computer vision that actually is a branch of artificial intelligence computer vision is a branch of artificial intelligence and of course we have the other branches of uh, you know artificial intelligence but let's focus on what is actually computer vision okay and of course people tend to uh, you know confuse this with image processing but you know this is definitely not image processing but computer vision what it does is it processes the data that we provide in the form of images so again what is images like these images or photos are taken by the cameras and of course videos uh will be used by deep learning models to accurately identify and classify the objects right so for example uh, you know we lay a fruit of baskets uh, sorry a basket of fruits in front of the table then uh, you know we we uh, as humans will be able to identify what is you know uh, grape what is orange and what is apple and when we actually train the you know the computer or the machine to identify the shape of the apple or the orange banana or grapes right by using any algorithm that will eventually help the computer also to identify the pattern of the fruits that is laid in front of it in the basket and it will provide the inference to the user saying that there is a basket of uh, fruits which includes two number of bananas three oranges four apples in front of us so this is what there is computer vision at a very very high level right so moving on to next we will see how computer vision works how it works so we saw what is computer vision right but how it actually works so as i said earlier it should not be you know confused with image processing image processing is nothing but uh, enhancing the already available image uh, by using the computer graphics to get a better form of the image that is already available and provide some inference out of it but that is not the same with the computer vision it deals with analysis of an image in the process it takes the input as an image while the output is the interpretation of the image it is it just not about the image the output will be uh, as i said 
two apples, three oranges, four banana. It, it's something like a numerical representation of the object in front of you. Or it, it, you don't even have to intervene or interfere telling about what lies in front of you. Okay. So uh, the computer or the machine, with, when it is trained and when you let it process the photos or videos, it itself will provide you with the output that uh, there are these and these in front of you or these and these images uh, or these and these objects are lying in front of us, right? It works by identifying different components of the image. Uh, so this is a simple application. What uh, can help us identify the things that lie in front of us, but more advanced applications allow for animals or people also to be recognized. So why do we need more advanced applications? Because a more advanced application will need uh, you know, the deep learning network algorithms or the more complicated algorithms to identify 3D, uh, three-dimensional objects or images to provide accurate um, uh, inference with respect to animals, because animals and humans can move, right? And when we process an image with animals or humans, we will definitely be dealing with the uh, three-dimensional or multi-dimensional images that needs more complex algorithms. Okay, a simple algorithms can deal with fruits or other objects or other, uh, you know, uh, single dimensional uh, stuff which is lying in front of us. But of course, more advanced application will only be able to uh, deal with uh, moving objects like humans or animals. So, we saw how it works, and we will now move on to the next by seeing what are CV applications. In fact, the whole presentation is about giving you an idea of what are the different applications, how actually the computer vision is applied across different industries and different streams of you know today's world and uh, how it has enabled the lives of uh, human by uh, getting itself applied or in the different domains, right? We all uh, know how things work, but there are so many things that are happening in the background which actually helps us uh, achieve what we are today so we'll see we'll see in the upcoming slides so what are the cv applications so it ranges from automation in applications of computer vision range from automation in self driving vehicles to developing accurate facial recognition software to inspecting bottles in you know manufacturing production line it does from simple things to complex things even by controlling robots to organizing information for example, you know, indexing databases of images. So there are so many things that actually computer vision does, but we don't know that, you know, computer vision is involved in all these arenas. And even smart glasses, if you take, are now more, more widely available. You know, you, we all know what smart glasses are, right? Smart glasses are something which will also, I mean, apart from enabling us to see things, it will also give us a small information about what uh, those objects are. So these are the smart glasses. Right, so moving on to next, uh, something about, you know, what is computer graphics? It converts models to images. And what is computer photography? It is nothing but images to images. So computer photography deals with uh, some form of images and the output will also be again in the form of images. So it is more of image processing. But computer vision is something which converts the images or the photos or whatever we see uh, to different models which can be used further for the, uh, you know, uh, for the further automation of the stuff. We will be seeing that in the up upcoming slides. Right, so what does, uh, I mean, now the upcoming slides will all talk about the different applications of computer vision in the different domains and different industries of today's world, right? So Waymo is a, uh, uh, in interesting, is an interesting application. It's not an application, basically it is a self-driving car. It's a smart car, I would say. Okay, it's a smart car of Google subsidiary and uh, it is in production, it's like, it's not uh, widely used in many countries, but that is a very that is a very interesting application that uses computer vision technology. 
okay because self driving cars you imagine the challenges that uh, self driving car could handle you know we ourselves as human it itself have so many uh, challenges when we are driving a car right we should be able to assess the obstruction in front of us the right uh, you know right uh, distance we should be able to uh, you know uh, uh, drive diligently in order to avoid the, the clash with other vehicles there are uh, there are so many challenges there are so many challenges when we you know drive a vehicle but for a car to drive on its own imagine what are all the different things that should be keyed in as input to enable this or to achieve this right so it is not about just seeing things but we should we should also be having a math to understand what lies where and in what distance in order to achieve this successfully so moving on to next we will be just talking about you know what is vision vision at a very high level we all know what vision is it's a natural gift that we all humans have right of course many of us are uh, blessed with this uh, capability of vision it is an amazing feature of natural intelligence of course you know the visual cortex occupies 50% of the cat's brain more human brain is devoted to vision than anything else so we all can imagine how important vision to us vision is to us right so by just by seeing things we infer we know what to do only after we see we can decide what we can do with it right all right so moving on to next this is just giving you the pics of different areas where exactly today computer vision is applied like it is there in safety it is there in health uh, domain it is there in the security domain comfort of course you know we we, we make robots do our work right to put ourselves in our own comfort zone of course not uh, the fun area is not to be left out even there we have the uh, you know computer vision playing an important role and of course access so what is access when you work in a company you will be provided with access to whatever uh, resources that you will need to work to get the required output so access is nothing but the first level of permission for you to enter into any uh, you know uh, company computer or any any anything for that matter right and for that we also use computer vision moving on to next we i mean this is a this is just you know data which you can also get from the google when exactly people started thinking that you know computer can be trained to uh, see it can be trained to think it can be trained to do max but it can also be trained to see things there is something what people thought you know then 1966 it was a very way uh, naive thought by uh, minsky it assigned he assigns computer vision as an under that summer project right and it slowly evolved in 1960s 70s 80s 90s and 2000 and in 2000s we even have broader recognition software you know large annotated data sets available and video processing also started in this uh, 2000 millennia going on to next how is it used in the numbers these are the example different examples the state of art you know uh, so let, let's take health as a very primary uh, you know application right uh, we all are concerned about uh, that's why we all are locked down <laughs> right so what how is it used in health you know there is this product called gauss surgical uh, this product is going to help us determine the actual or the accurate loss of blood during surgery so they are using this gauss surgical product in in many of the cesarean operations which uh, you know women undergo to uh, child delivery right this will actually help during the blood transfusion the uh, to assess the actual amount of blood that needs to be transfused right because only when you know how much is lost we can 
you know, transfer the same amount of blood to the body. So this product, Got Surgical, is helping us assess or determine the accurate amount of blood that is lost during the surgery. Next. Yeah, so of course it is also used to read uh, you know, the scanned documents to text. That is also possible. So, for example, in some of the foreign countries, we, you know, when we pass through a toll, right, we pass through a toll and uh, we see that uh, the amount will be debited uh, directly from the card that we place on the machine. So, it, it, it's nothing but computer vision, right? So, it detects the distance traveled, it detects the you know, the license plate on the vehicle and then it calculates the exact amount of uh, deduction and it detects the same from the card that will be placed on the machine. Next will be face deduction. I'm going to next is face deduction. So we all know, we all have, uh, must have used a camera and when we try shooting uh, photograph on the camera we, we knowing that there is a little uh, green color you know blue color uh, square box that focuses directly on the face of uh, the object which is called face deduction it, it has the intelligence to detect where exactly the face is and focuses the uh, camera lens on the face and uh, the brightness will be adjusted directly this is something which we all know right and most of the uh, cameras today has this uh, capability. Next is something which is, you know, moving on to next, which is very similar to what I just spoke. It is called smile detection, which is, it is a, of course, an, uh, you know, important feature of any camera for that matter, because the shutter speed uh, is the key here. It is something which has to be adjusted uh, during the motion, because, you know, kids or you know, uh, uh, or images that actually move very fast is something that we would be interested to capture. However, when the camera shutter speed, if the, if it doesn't adapt itself to the the object or the moving object, then uh, we'll not be able to capture it properly. So this is another place where computer vision, you know, it helps us automatically trip trip the shutter at just the right instance so that we capture the perfect expression and the moment. Going on to next, this is another place where computer vision helps us. This uh, actually is not in use in India, but it is there in some of the foreign countries where it helps us use object recognition in supermarkets as one of the applications. So that it will be a smart camera which is flush mounted in the checkout lane. What does is it will be continuously watching for the items that pass through or kept or that is kept in the basket, right? So you know when an item is detected and recognized, the cashier verifies the quantity of the items that were found under the basket and continues to close the transaction. Okay, so it will be easier for the supermarkets to rely on this camera to make sure all the items are scanned and built, right? So that uh, none, none of them is missed. And then still the item can remain under the basket, but still it will not be uh, going unbuilt, okay? So this is some, this is an other area where uh, computer vision is used. Moving on to next. This is, uh, I would say, a very important feature because uh, we also use it for vision-based biometrics. So biometric is what? Is something which is very unique to yourself. Okay, it is very unique to an individual identity. So most of us use biometrics by our thumb, finger, uh, you know, impression. But uh, we all should know that there is very much unique on the eye retina as well on each individual human beings, which can uniquely identify the individual self. So you know, when even when we uh, bring a person who is very much, uh, you know, a lookalike of the existing person. It cannot actually, uh, it, it cannot actually, uh, you know, evade the system. It can clearly differentiate between the two human beings and tell this is he and this is she or he, right? So basically, this is how an Afghan girl is 
picture, for instance, is showing you an Afghan girl who was identified by her iris patterns. So the iris patterns are very individual, uh, unique pattern for each and every individual human beings by which they can clearly identify the individual. Uh, moving to next is the access. I already spoke to you about access. So each and every company uh, today, even from small business segment to any uh, huge industry will definitely have access systems. So without without identifying yourself, you will not be able to gain access to any of your you know, systems. So for that matter, we have fingerprint scanners today on many laptops and devices. And of course, we have facial recognition you know, uh, systems, which will be having a part of your photograph or part of your uh, face identification as one of the uh, access key to gain access to the system. And as I said, this is something which doesn't even require a password because passwords can be something which can be stolen from one people, right? But uh, when there is a facial recognition, then this is definitely not possible. And of course, things will not go wrong. Okay. Right. So moving to next. Of course, there are you know smartphones which have this object recognition feature. Right. Uh, when we point, we will find what it is. Right. Uh, we have Google goggles, Google Lens. So when people who have who must have used this Google phone uh, should be knowing this feature. So when you switch on the Google Lens and place the Google phone on any uh, you know, object, it will try to tell you what the object is by its own uh, inference. So how is that possible? That is possible because computer can see, or you know, it can infer what is lying in front of us. Okay, so moving on to next. Yes, of course, it is used in the areas of special effects where we, you know, capture the face and multiply, multiply the face by, you know, putting a three-dimensional object to it. We all know, we all. Uh, so what's this movie Matrix, which is a clear uh, illustration of how the computer vision has been used. Of course, today we all know what is motion capture. We have seen movies with, uh, which has uh, you know, used this technology of motion capture. And motion capture is just one of the applications of where computer vision is used. Sports, of course, sports. I think I have a better slide explaining how it is being used. Now, let's move on to the next one, which is smart cars. As I said, Waymo is one such technology which is actually using uh, computer vision. So, how that is being used is you know, it will use the cameras and uh, it will be able to. Uh, assess the obstruction in front of it better than a human. It will be able to uh, identify any obstruction lying in front of it uh, even by a distance of 300 yards. So that is something which is uh, very unique. I mean, uh, of course, you know, we can avoid uh, cases like drunk and drive and all that because we rely on cars which can drive by itself, that is going to be a very safer option for any people who drive or who wants to drive from one place to another, right? So many um, car companies like BMW, GM, Volvo has already started doing R&D in this. And of course, Google already has its cars in production. The next slide, when we move on to next, we will be seeing Google <coughs> car Waymo. This is the one, as you can see, in the front glass, we see two cameras pointing outside, right? It will read or it will be pointing. It will be pointing the cameras to the outside through the glass and it will, you know, transmit the uh, images to the radar, right? And you can see the sensor mounted on the top of the car. So this will work in tandem with the camera to provide the 
actual uh, driving instructions to the car. Going to next. Uh, okay, this is called predictive maintenance and critical infrastructure. So, I mean, if you, in case of like you know oil companies and uh, other uh, manufacturing industries where they will be having or it's, where they be where they'll be having installed many huge uh, you know uh, cylinders and other uh, other other important equipments. There will be something called maintenance, which will be running in a regular interval. But there can be something which is also called as predictive maintenance. You know, because this maintenance are something which will happen once in three months, once in six months, or once in a year, depending on the criticality of the equipments that are placed. So, predictive maintenance is something which can happen even in between this time frame. Because uh, when we have this predictive maintenance installed, then that will actually help us. Uh, uh, analyze, help us uh, foresee a problem that is happening and say for example there is a gas leak or oil leak in any of these turbines or you know these cylinders then it will be constantly monitoring and watching this uh, uh, these equipments and giving uh, it will be sending an alert to the person who will be monitoring this uh, you know the, the equipment owner right and uh, he will be doing the predictive maintenance uh, in, 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 in prior to the problem. So we can avoid huge uh, loss when there is a problem avoided because there is one, even a small problem can cause huge uh, business loss in these places. So that can be avoided, right? Moving to next. Uh, We'll see this uh, vision-based traction and games. We all know, I think we must be have been used as Nintendo. People who have used Nintendo uh, knows that the camera-based IR tracking is built inside. Okay, so with just the movements that we do, we will, I mean, the movements that we do actually gets translated to, to the actions inside the uh, TV, right? So how is that possible? That is actually, captured and then translated in the form of movements right and that is an again end result of you know computer vision application in this place this is very similar i mean moving on to the next we many people would have seen interactive games in the malls right so people you must have been seeing uh, uh, people you know uh, standing on a floor and dancing and the same thing getting converted to movements inside, so this is nothing but again, you know, uh, image recognition. Image recognition is a capability of computer vision, right? So that is how these things could have been possible today. Vision in space. This is very, very important because you know, in space, we, I mean, we cannot send, we cannot be sending all humans to spaces in order to conduct research, experiments, and all that stuff. So we would be definitely using or relying on cameras in that uh, domain. To capture the necessary images, the necessary uh, the required uh, patterns, the land patterns, and all that, which is the uh, which is which is which is required by the astronauts and uh, researchers in order to ascertain and know what is you know lying or what is uh, actually found in these places, right? So it will be used for panorama stitching. So a panorama stitching is nothing but a technology which actually combines different different panoramic images to one single image and you know getting an inference out of it and again uh, 3d terrain modeling obstacle deduction position tracking right uh, only with the help of the, with the help of the cameras that are mounted in these uh, satellites we will be able to the scientists or researchers will be able to identify the position where exactly it is positioned and what is the landscape that it is covering right Right, so moving on to next. Industrial robots, many, many would have seen the pictures of, uh, or if you had visited some of the uh, car manufacturing industries, you might be seeing that things happen in an automated fashion where the robots actually place the doors, dashboards, glasses, and then assemble a car as such, right? So this is possible by 
the vision guided robots which actually position nut runners on wheels so you know this is all automated now we don't have to have any human interference to produce so, but how, again this is not uh, in all the car companies but most of them have started deploying such uh, technologies okay and this is possible because of the computer vision because it has to have a vision guided uh, mechanism in order to do this mobile robots the pictures themselves are self explanatory as to what they are being used or why they are being used how they are being used of course warehouse management is an important uh, place where this is again being applied because today we know warehouse management is going very tremendously people order so many things online right and people has to i mean you know when we order so many things online amazon or flipkart for that matter so how do they do warehouse management they actually have uh, you know for one city they will have one warehouse which is like a very huge one having all the stocks uh, you know uh, updated and from there they actually dispatch all those stocks which are and whenever they are getting ordered online right so that is possible uh, with you know the stocks getting updated and all that is possible only with the computer vision as you can see the this is a flying camera or a drone which actually captures the or scans the products that are or the stocks that are placed in the warehouse and then it updates uh, updates the master inventory right so that is how this is done Moving on to the next, we will be having this medical imaging where we kind of, you know, do a 3D image processing. So, as you can see, there is a person lying on the bed, right? And uh, this camera will be, you know, capturing or this will be doing the X ray of the particular portion which is actually getting focused, right? And that image will be used for the surgeon. So, there are surgery is done which will not even require a doctor in front of it and uh, these are called image guided surgeries okay so this this is again a very important place where uh, computer vision is being applied so i think we have covered a lot of industry domains and uh, places where actually the computer vision plays a key role in uh, in achieving what they are achieving today right so I think this, with this, we have come to the end of this presentation and uh, what we can again do is, you know, I have a beautiful link, which uh, this is a very informative link, which actually can help you understand or which can help you know the real time applications, which will actually help us understand uh, or know where on in which domain and in which companies what are being used and how they are being used right for example in automotive uh, driver assistance and traffic management in drive traffic management we use real-time traffic management using roadside cameras license plate recognition systems these are all currently used so which company is using it is the information that i have in that link and i can probably send that link if anyone is interested to see that uh, after this meeting. I and head tracking, and of course, in many film and video sport analysis, because uh, sports industry also is now trying to leverage on, you know, the uh, computer vision technology, because they wanted to know, they wanted to know how far, you know, the media has reached in promoting their products and uh, their accessories they wanted to assess take a, a general measure of uh, how uh, their products are being promoted and widely used they rely on computer vision so definitely the uh, there are key vendors like hawkeye playful vision quest tech sports vision wizard who actually deploy this computer vision technology to help the sports industry uh, get the information and based on that, they do the capacity plan. Okay, so that's how this is being done in uh, sports arena. Okay, so like that, there are so many things, and I can keep talking about uh, 
the domains and the industries which actually deploy uh, the computer vision technology and the artificial intelligence in order to achieve more and way ahead of what they are currently doing and uh, this is definitely going to have a drastic or uh, uh, phenomenal change in the coming future also okay um, I definitely hope many of the students who are here will also you know be working in uh, the artificial intelligence arena and bring in more use, use cases and definitely more uh, applications that uh, you know others will be using right okay so i think uh, that's all i have to share with you people today right and i'll be definitely interested to have any feedback or uh, have any questions i can try to answer i mean you can connect with me offline our uh, company of all systems actually deals with training uh, people on you know the cloud and artificial technologies so we're definitely interested to uh, have people on board it okay in any specific training requirements and of course we also support many uh, smb segments for cloud hosting and uh, you know we uh, help migrate people from their legacy data centers to cloud uh, so that's what we are doing today and uh, we also try to come up with more uh, or you know at least for today we are coming up with small projects that will actually be uh, applied in the artificial intelligence domain okay so yes i think uh, i think this is what i have Hari. Uh, i have uh, shared some insights hope this will be helpful for uh, the people yeah Thank you, Nithi. Uh, thank you for sharing with us, sir. Uh, we're glad that we have with you uh, throughout the workshop and you have guided throughout the workshop, uh, like uh, for the day before the uh, presentations, you have helped us. So thank you for your support. And uh, guys, uh, we also thank you for everyone to participate in this course and glad that you have a wonderful future and uh, we expect uh, you to come uh, come back with your feedbacks and uh, if there are any you have any uh, queries you can also ping us so uh, we will be sharing the i mean we'll be sharing our email ids with the, in the google classroom so that you can uh, uh, you can get use of uh, use of us thank you thank you guys uh, we shall meet at the time and uh, god permits in future thank you thank you for participating in this course thank you Thank you.